black here. Stay with me, Zach. This day off in the wonderful barrens, the winds picked up and snow threatened. Tomorrow our plan was to get as close as possible to the resupply before snow conditions got soft and ice unsafe. For supper I had a bowl of homemade goulash I had dehydrated myself. It hit the spot. Later in the evening, Gusts still blew hard, but the skies had cleared. It was going to be a cold night, so we did a little warm up before diving into the tent. Well, it's the uh, evening routine here now. I'll get into the bed clothes. You just got to do it really quick. Quick as you can. My shirt, make sure you grab your shirt, not your pants. Every second counts. Alright, let's do jumping jacks for 10 minutes outside. Ran on the spot. Okay, time for the pants. Oh, the socks hard to get off. This is the foot I had to blister on. It's all bandaged up there now. Two pairs of socks, two thick pairs. Double them up here, see me. Me and Sack will get right to sleep and bag now, we'll be best gone. Get me joggers on. I'd say it's the coldest night yet, no doubt. Especially right on the side of the barrens here. Wind sweeping across me. I'm a little sheltered, but uh, shelter's hard to come by out here. Don't be alarmed. All is good once I get in the sleeping bag. It ain't this bad. So don't make it, uh, don't let this scare you off from winter camping. It's just a part of the fun. Once you get tucked away, uh, can't beat it. Back on goes the baklava. Tuck that in here. Nice and good. Double up with a toque on top. What are you doing, Zach? Hey, buddy. So, uh, last night got down to minus 14. Uh, it wasn't too bad. Uh, just goes to show, though, that, uh, you know, you have the proper equipment. And you can do uh, winter camping trips like this. It's all about having the equipment, uh, you know, the right equipment for the job. And if you do that, you'll be good to go.
Да, белый герой. Do your caribou bomb. We're done. And now we're prop ready to go. Day seven. Good crisp walking conditions today. Ah, uh, it's perfect. I'd say I'm gonna do some good distance today and maybe uh, even reach the Virgil Highway. 22 kilometers remain and it's now 11.15. You never know. I'm giving this thing a little go today on my nose here. I uh, got pretty burnt by the wind and the sun uh, over the last four or five days. So, trying to keep it a little protected. It's driving me nuts though. Making my glasses fog up, so. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Today, the wind was still in the fury, but blue skies were brilliant. With all land being white and similar, I shoot compass bearings every so often to keep us on track. So far, we had only spotted a few moose from a distance, but there was no doubt they were in the area. Oh, today's a bit of a tangle. Uh, I was making good time. I probably had around uh, seven kilometers in, uh, in only two hours, and then I get myself into this snarly old mess. <laughs> I'm getting hooked into something every minute or two and uh, just almost lost my solar charger. So uh, lucky I looked back and noticed it was kind of hanging on there by a thread. That's, you know, that's a part of it. And uh, it's not going to be smooth going the whole way, you know. Uh, I can't be have my hopes up for that. But, uh, you know, every now and then I'm going to get myself into a situation that uh, I'm going to have to take my time and not rush through it. And that's one of these... Oh joy, here is my map. Get it, Sacco. We need that map. Got that back, that could have been shitty. That's the map for the next section. I just had a loose end of the map bag because it was a little easier to get to. Once back to the sled, I made another small mistake. But this time, it cost me. And right now, I have a soaking wet map that, uh, it has my route to the Burgio Highway, which still remains 16 kilometers, and it also has my first 20k of the next leg, so I guess I'll be following my GPS. With my topographic map all but useless, I was thankful for my backup GPS system and that I would not have to follow the stairs. Ah, uh, we just had a close call there. Encountered our uh, first moose in close quarters. Uh, Saku kind of freaked out. I had him off the leash. And, uh, by the time I got a hold of Saku, the moose had scurried. Uh, his tracks are just right here. Tangled up in Saku. Right there. Okay. And our sled is over here. Only around 20, 30 yards away. I tried to get in here and get a picture of him or something, but uh, I was too slow or he was too quick. Then we were presented with a long winding brook that was open and on our path. Campfire tonight, Sacco, buddy. Come on, Sacco. 
Alright, let's go. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Whew. Up to my shins. I don't know if Zach is going to want to do it. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Come on. What a good boy. Good boy. Good boy, Saku. Now that's a good boy. Frank, I'm cold now. Got some Canadian geese overhead here. Getting my feet wet twice today calls for a big fire, and a big fire I got going. I waited to do all my chores before I uh, before I took my boots off and got my cold feet exposed. That way they keep warm as I was walking around, or warmish, I guess. I got the tent up. Now I can finally uh, warm these babies up. I erected a little clothesline. Now it'd be tough to see, but I'm gonna dry up my socks and uh, all that good stuff. Uh, my pants, insoles, and my boots. And uh, should be good to go by the morning. Oh man. Here, I have to be careful not to place my numbing feet too close to the flames. Lack of feeling increases the chance of burning them. Though April 26th, plenty of snow still remained in the woods, and the lakes still thick with ice. Today, we have our final strides towards the Burgio Highway. God damn, in the tight bush here, things are getting tangly. Following moose trails, that's all. Yeah, and this is the end result of uh, getting the map wet because I couldn't tell uh, exactly where to go from the GPS, didn't show any trees, and uh, look where I am now in a big ship pile of trees. I have no idea when I'm going to come out of these trees. Vegetation detail on any map can often be inaccurate. Always be ready. For surprises. I can see the light. I can see the light. Here we go. We're back out. Now we're moving. There we go. Now we're back on track. Back out in the great wide open, baby. Thank God I'm out of that. That was some tangly stuff, buddy. I tell you that. Whew. Watch out, Taku. Good boy. Thank you. Hold up. Hold up. Let me see your spot. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Good boy. Hey, stay. Okay. Hey. With nearly 100 kilometers in and lots of walking on snow and ice, Saku's paws begin to show some wear and tear. Saku, stay. To help alleviate the symptoms, I used an ointment cream for drying cracked paws. It worked well. Being human friendly, I also use it on my weather worn face and lips. Let's go. Let's go. Here we go now. Come on. We're getting close, buddy. If you can see that, it's tough. Uh, that's the power lines on the Virgil Highway. So uh, we've made it. Uh, it's the first bit of uh, definite life we've seen since leaving Robinson's uh, eight days ago, uh, besides a couple cabins along the way. 
over here. Checkpoint number one comes at Peter Strides Pond and the Burgio Highway. Here we get our first of three resupplies. Peter Strides is off the grid, but a bustling little cabin community. It's a backcountry lover's paradise with access to almost unlimited surrounding land. Residents, some full time and others part, rely on wood, wind and sun for their energy needs. One of those cabin owners was Dean McDonald. The local big game guide was waiting with our new goods, some handy advice, and a helping hand. But you got my number anyway, if we get old with right? Okay, yeah. So. All right. Best All right, time. best time. I'll send you the address. You send me that. Yeah. Right? yeah, anything right. you need, just let us know. Take care. Yeah. Thanks you again, Dean. Phone, you need your phone charge more on no phone. There's going to be a few waiting around here. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Right, Come on, Taku. Come on. Dean verified that there will be activity in the area this weekend, an opportunity yeah. to fully recharge my tech gear. He also offered up his trailer, as mild weather made travel by sled look bleak. It became our brief home as we waited for the land to harden. I'm uh, trying to find a way here to uh, rig my sled and snowshoes up to the back of my pack. That's what I'm at this morning. Maybe it's a bit more morning now, bright and early. And uh, that way I'll get the cold, hard packed snow uh, in the early hours. And that looks like it might work. My original plans had us paddling in the raft by now, but as we know, things don't always work that way. Our wait time was unknown as ice still choked the lakes. So I'm going to stash a few items here, just off the side of the Virgil Highway, and uh, that way, tomorrow morning when I'm coming up it, I won't have as much baggage hanging off me. Make things a little easier. That's a good start. Hoping tomorrow all the snow is going to be hard packed again and uh, it will be much easier for me and old Saku to make our way. I'll take this off you now actually, but give you a break. Still a lot of snow in the woods. I just went out thin near to my waist and I'd say there's more down there. Six, seven feet of snow in some places. That's Newfoundland, you don't know what you're getting. Right now it's uh, last day of April and uh, the snow doesn't show a whole lot of sign of melting soon in some places anyways. Usually the thick woods and uh, places where less sun uh, makes contact, that's usually the areas that are going to have a lot more snow this time of year. 
All right, buddy, watch out. After stashing our supplies, back to the camper we went with the woods of central Newfoundland at our doorstep. Okay, so it's uh, 4.30 a.m. here and I just had my morning coffee. Before Saku gets up, uh, I've been doing this while I've been in Peter Strides, uh, is putting on some ointment uh, for dry skin, uh, specifically his pads. So before he gets up now, I'm going to put a little bit on and uh, that's going to make his paws a lot softer. Hold on a sec. Uh, life in the trailer was good, but uh, it's time to get back on the move. Let's go, Saku. The second stage of our journey began with some great wildlife experiences. Two big game animals of our province were on full display. Time to get going here. Sled is packed and uh, it's a new day. Can't wait to get into the central interior here. What do you think, Saku? Uh, the sled's a little heavier now. I got the raft added on there. Life jacket. Paddles are underneath. And uh, enough goods to get me to Con River. I had a poison truck in line here, great going this morning. Uh, even though there's less snow than last week, uh, it's real hard and crisp and makes for uh, pretty smooth traveling. I just gotta pick my way around the uh, the marsh areas, that's all. Come on Zach, let's go buddy, come on. Come on. Come on buddy. Here we go, let's go buddy, come on. And looking down at Spruce Pond. What a view, you can't beat it. You can't beat it. We're doing well today. We got uh, 14 kilometers in and it just turned in around then, so uh, making good progress. Hard to complain about that. Thank you, what do you got to under your bag, buddy? Come here. Come here. There you go. For Spruce Pond, the ice was on its way out. But there was still some life left in it. Later in the afternoon, my sidekick's physical condition forced me to make an easy decision. Uh, it's back left paw, uh, the same one that was causing us some issues there uh, the last day before we got to Peter Strides. Now, uh, we've been going for seven hours, it's about two o'clock, so uh, I don't think it would be a bad idea now if we find a campsite, and that will give Saku a little break for this evening.
Uh, we set up camp today around uh, 1.30 p.m. Uh, we had put in a good solid seven hours, leaving around 6.30 a.m. this morning. Uh, I was pleased with that. I, I kind of wanted to push a bit further towards uh, uh, Burnt River that way, but uh, unfortunately, uh, the Sacus paws are getting a little sore. Uh, I've been treating them the last few nights with cream and that. One thing's for certain here. Uh, I planned this trip, and uh, obviously Saku was my lone companion. You know, he loves it out here. He loves every minute of it. And, if, you know, for me to finish this trip without him is uh, completely out of the question. Uh, when I, I want to cross that finish line and celebrate uh, getting this thing done. I want Saku to be there with me. And uh, whatever I need to do along the way, whether it be uh, take more breaks or uh, slow the pace, uh, you know, time is on our side, and uh, we'll get to the Avalon uh, when we get there. So, uh, for now, I mean, Saku is the main priority. Well, would you know it? Look at this moose making a little evening trot across Spruce Pond. Good for him. Keep her going, buddy. This morning I'm uh, carrying about 110 pounds here. That's my 85 pound pack. And uh, I took all of Saku's dog food for the 15, 20 days we expect to be in here. Uh, that's given him a break on his, uh, his limbs and his paws. And uh, I also got the raft and all that gear. So uh, it's a fine load this morning, no doubt about that. Come on, boys, here we go. Let's go, Sack. Here we go, buddy. After some quality rest, Saku's pa looked much better, and he seemed to have a fine hop in his step today. Yeah, these are the types of situations I find myself in now uh, as spring uh, slowly takes a grip on, uh, on Mother Nature here. I gotta skirt all the way around this uh, marsh, uh, try to keep on the snowy areas that uh, outline the woods. Every now and then you just gotta go through a bit of Tuckamore. There's not much you can do about it. Uh, pulled across this bit of marsh here and uh, the rope finally busted on the sled. Not too bad, 120 kilometers worth of pulling. Uh, that's pretty big strength. So uh, I have to fix this up again for
Uh, the wind's starting to pick up a little bit out here now. Uh, it switched over to an easterly, and uh, as the weather indicated, uh, I think I'm looking for some snow coming here this evening. So before it gets too late, uh, we'll be setting up an early camp to make sure we're uh, well sheltered and, uh, and the fort is down tight. Yeah, we're tangled up now in the Droka Woods. Uh, we're not off track, but uh, we're not on a great track either. Uh, we had to get through this bit of trees here to get down to Burnt River, and uh, just picking our way. I was gonna cut a trail. Uh, it's only probably, geez, not even a quarter of a kilometer, but uh, yeah, I figured I'd pick my way through, and if I really need to take the ax out, uh, I would. Uh, we made it out, and uh, here's Burnt River. I guarantee you won't be crossing this one. The quickly degrading state of the ice meant our days walking on it were soon coming to an end. But it wasn't quite ready for full-time use of the raft just yet. We now found ourselves in a tricky situation. Looks like that's as far as I'm going today. Might be a raft day tomorrow. I'll show you. Trying to get some shelter from the storm here. That's going to be coming along later tonight. It uh, picked up there for a bit around two. I think that was a pre warning. And uh, that's when we took shelter because uh, there's no point to getting everything soaking wet. And uh, we put a little spot up here. Good for Saku too. Short days for Saku is what he needs, right? Some of the outfit got wet there earlier uh, when we were going over the marshlands and skirting alongside some of the brooks. So, uh, yeah, drying out time it is. Oh, nice and soothing after uh, a couple good days back on the move after our break at uh, Peter Strides. Man, great country since then though, it's been beautiful. Pretty wide open. Whew. Ah, it got smoked out big time then. It's uh, it's beautiful. I just heard the first loon call of the season. Uh, there's some open water down there, and uh, I guess enough open water for a loon to touch down and uh, begin the, a new year. I'm sure, there's lots of fish out there. The wait is on now for me. Twelve days until uh, fishing season opens. So 
super excited to start being able to get some fish into my diet and uh, uh, my hook will be in the water every chance I get. 12 days! Woo! Even after uh, snow, rain, and freezing rain, it was a mixed bag last night, it's still nice to be able to get a fire going in the morning. Uh, for quicker meals, saving your fuel, and uh, just also to warm the body up. So The key is to keeping dry stuff uh, inside your tent or under your uh, vestibule. Strike one didn't work. Everything is still a little damp, no matter what, inside or outside. All I got is birch bark and some uh, dry uh, spruce twigs that were dead towards the bottom of the tree, ones that don't get sunlight. Now we're in business, and I had some dry splits that were uh, also tucked underneath my tent. And then once you get the fire going, anything that's damp that's laying around, uh, you get it near the fire, you dry it out, or eventually if the fire gets hot enough, uh, it will burn anything. But everything's pretty damp this morning, so I'm not expecting a big fire. Something give me a quick cup of coffee and some oatmeal and uh, warm up some water to put with Saku's food and then uh, ASAC. Uh, and that should be enough. Uh, it's not a bad morning. It's wet and gross, but it's warm at least. Could be a delayed start. By the time I get a ring uh, down and the snow is pretty soft now, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. But uh, I know I probably need to raft across Burnt Pond River, and uh, that's where I find myself. Uh, it's either that or a walk maybe 15, 20 kilometers around it. Not too fond of doing that. So I think we'll be okay with the raft. Uh, we'll see how it goes. What do you think, bud? Day 15 of, uh, of the trip here. And we're excited to get going, aren't we, Sack? We always are. Sometimes spirits are low, but uh, with the weather and just continual grinding. But uh, uh, we'll find a bright spot somewhere along the way. So, uh, yesterday evening didn't turn out to be too bad after. We only got five centimeters of snow. Some uh, freezing rain and rain overnight. Uh, the winds picked up, maybe gusting to 30 or 40. So uh, it wasn't too bad. We stayed put, uh, had a good night, and want to wait for those winds to die down this morning so uh, we can make a crossing. This is what I'm talking about. Pull! <laughs> 
it's that thrill, that rush, when you're doing something uh, that you haven't done before, you don't know what the outcome is.